Spartans to Mission Debrief. We've played every mission of the mainline Halo video games, and now we're playing every mission from the rest of the games in the franchise in chronological order. Each episode we'll be discussing our experiences and sprinkling in a little lore along the way. If you'd like to play along and have your thoughts read on the show, email us at podcastevolved at gmail.com or drop us a tweet at podcastevolved on Twitter. We'll be recapping Halo Wars on the next episode what? if you like what you hear oh shit <laughs> yeah. it's over it's over it's over if you like what you hear and want to support the show visit podcast of all on patreon this episode we're debriefing the final mission escape from halo wars i'm your host colin perkins alongside david arnold hello everybody and krista brown february 25th shall we be remembered as john forge day Wait, Shout. what does he do? Does he do something cool? Yeah, he does cool things. Okay. He, he talks to the camera a lot. Oh. It's like one it. of those, it's like The Office, huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Just gives stares. Last mission was Reactor. Anders, Serena, and Captain Cutter agreed that the only way to stop the Covenant from using the massive Forerunner fleet against humanity was to use the FTL drive from the Spirit of Fire to blow up the star within he- Etrin Harborage. After the Pelicans transporting the reactor got shot down, Sergeant Forge had to use an elephant to drag the key to their plan uphill through a healthy Covenant resistant, resistance and place it into position atop the Apex base site. Now in escape, the Arbiter and a contingent of elites ambush Forge and Red Team as they're prepping the FTL drive for its trip to the sun. The Spartan twos slice through the elites while our fearless leader gets revenge on Ripamormi. Forge volunteers to escort the FTL drive to uh, for manual detonation, while Red Team lead the UNSC's desperate search for a way out of the shield world. Professor Anders and Serena guide Jerome, Alice, and Douglas to unlock a portal that will allow the Spirit of Fire to escape the planet's impending destruction. However, the full force of the Covenant and a massive flood infestation stand in their way. Date of the game, as Krista already said, February 25th. We'll always remember Forge on this day. For what? <laughs> Wait for it. We'll, we'll talk about it later. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> he's cool and he smells good. Uh, what? Let's talk about this cutscene. Colin's Wait, going around <laughs> smelling Halo characters. <laughs> Colin, rate the best smelling Her- Halo characters 1 through 10. Doesn't he look like he smells delicious? You don't think so? I'm confused oh and a little God. disturbed. Jesus, coffee. <laughs> Too much coffee. Too much coffee today. All right, David. Cutscene time. Save me. Cutscene time. We have probably one of the most iconic cutscenes of this game. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I think it's it's just a beautiful one that, that stands apart on its own. And yeah. If you haven't already seen it, go watch it right now. Um, it's super damn good. It's even I watched it like randomly throughout the years, just like oh yeah, remember that badass cutscene in Halo mm-hmm. Wars? I'm gonna go watch it real quick, um, cause it's awesome. Yeah, you f- and you forget how good it is because you don't, you know, you, not everybody's playing Halo Wars all the time, and then you go off and play other Halo stuff. Like this is one of the juiciest cutscenes we we have in Halo. It really is because it shows both like the awesomeness of Spartans. Mm-hmm. of forge and of like elites all in one well yeah i guess like in the arbiter um we'll and just compare just... like think about halo 5 the the chief and uh lock fight and then c- cut back to this thing like this thing is amazing. so much better oh my yeah. god the chief and lock fight looks really stupid compared to this yeah. right um yeah because this is like what you've read about the Spartans, you can now see it happening, which is really cool. Mm. And it also really sets up the fact that, I mean, how is a human being, one human, a mano a mano with a, an elite, how one-sided that actually really is? Like, I mean, it makes sense that the elites would look down on humanity as being kind of weaklings in, in terms of way, because we kind of are in comparison to this much stronger alien race. Um, so what Forge achieves here is pretty damn fucking yeah. cool. And um, it just comes across really well. So the cutscene opens with the reactor uh, on its big tank track, well, not really, on big ass wheels. Um, you have Forge and three Spartans that are only ever referred to as Spartans. <laughs> um, they're not given their names in this cutscene, which is weird. Uh, which makes, 
Yeah, but it could also be the way I know Blur made these cutscenes and it was probably made apart from the game. So it's possible they didn't have names when this was when they were being made mm. or voiced or whatever. Sure. Um uh, anyway, you have three Spartans there with um weapons that don't match what they've had before, so they're not like easily identifiable. <laughs> right. um, so you got There's a couple one, SMGs in there. Yeah, you got some dual <laughs> SMGs. You've got a shotgun. I think the third guy also has like an SMG. Yeah, yeah, two of them uh, have SMGs. Two of dual SMGs. Um, you have random marine number one. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry, random marine number one. <laughs> Um, he's a lieutenant, he kinda, I think. He refers to him he, as lieutenant. Is, yeah. yeah, he kind of goes up to a, uh, the door of where you are and kind of looks around. And then the Spartans move across to the front of the reactor because essentially they know they have to arm this reactor and get the hell out of here so they don't have, kinda have to hold the ground a little bit. You get the unmistakable shimmy of a stealth elite and the Arbiter pretty much pops his sword and comes out of stealth at the same time, which is cool. Um, as opposed to just being a floating sword in space. <laughs> what? I loved the floating swords in space. How dare you yeah. disrespect them? Yeah, it's a Halo thing. Uh, but you also get then is pretty much that Marine getting murdered real bad and a bunch of elites <laughs> coming out of stealth miles away on this walkway. I don't know why you do it that way, but anyway, they're, <laughs> they're ages away. They're and they don't have, they're Yeah, they're slowly walking and this lieutenant is murdered real bad. And Forge essentially says to the Spartans, you take care of the elites, I'm going to take the Arbiter, who just killed the thing. And it's a pretty cool start, so Forge just kind of kicks off the brakes of the reactor. Yeah. And like, it like flies down on the rails into the Arbiter, and he kind of has to hold it, and it looks like he gets crushed against the door, which is a fucking cool way to start a fight. The Spartans pretty much set up uber style with two dual smgs oh, i guess Halo 2 is i love it when he jumps over the elite <sighs> and yeah douglas i guess takes thing and these elites charge with with like pikes yeah which are weird um so these are kind of like the honor guard weapons i guess we, we've, we've seen them throughout the game these elites kind of standing um guard their honor guards so mm -hmm. we've seen these weapons before never actually used um not in game. Yeah, we never see it in, Not in game. game. I mean, it would make yeah. sense because there is a prophet around, so there are honor yeah. guards around. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess I always thought these these weapons were more ceremonial than functional, but um, and that they'd have some kind of like swords or like weapons. But anyway, anyway um, it leads to this awesome thing where the Spartans charge one guy, and they're just blowing dudes up. They're flipping. They're so acrobatic. They're like dual wielding SNGs into dudes as they're jumping them. Yeah. And like point blank emptying these clips into their faces. They're disarming them with their own weapons and using them against them. It's oh, so dope. So good. They're just like catching them in between. One of them, like, he gets a pike and it gets cut in half. He throws the top half at a, sp at a lead and just impales him. Oh, yeah. it's awesome. The action then cuts to Forge with his SNG, which he's never had before. It's that one cutscene. And the elite is not tracked behind. He's gone. He appears behind them. Forge ducks just in time to miss uh, his getting speared by a second blade. Uh, he pretty much punches um, the elite, so he leaves his blade behind, and he's now down to one. He empties a clip of an SMG. It does nothing. It's, so a, it's a little it's bit pistol. of pistol. Oh, it's, it's, it's an SMG an first. He has an it's AR. It's an AR first, yeah. yeah. Um, that gets cut in half. He then charges the elite and knocks him to the ground, and then does this cool-ass thing where he elbows the Arbiter in the face, Pulls a pistol and empties the clip into his hand, yeah, and to get him to release the blade, which is so fucking cool, yeah. Uh, and then it kind of turns real bad. Um, the arbiter rolls over, grabs Forge, punches him in the gut, and kills and you him. Feel it. <laughs> <laughs> that should have killed him. He's dead him. now. He's dead now. His spine um, is broken. One hundred percent. His internals are gone. Probably <laughs> shot himself. It's not pretty. Um, <laughs> At least peed himself. <laughs> At least yeah. a little bit. Yeah. You, uh, you got some cool dialogue here with the Arbiter, which is like the rest of your race, your race, you're weak and undisciplined. Um, it's because it's Forge, he has a plan. Uh, he picks him up by the head and kind of throws him into the wheel. The scene then cuts back to the Spartans running down this hallway. The awesome, kind of crazy ass 360 upside down flip dual SME shot oh, to the face. Oh, I love face. this part. It's yeah. beautiful. It's actually one SMG. And then he just kind of shoots him into his face and then spins him around. And as a second, the lead spears his own friend 
and then gets again shotgunned in the back. It's just crazy. And then the very last one is the uh, Lee kind of grabs the shotgun. Douglas just kind of muscles him off it with his shoulder. And that's pretty much it. It cuts back down to the Arbiter just throwing his forge around. Picks up his blade. Uh, he pretty much says you're weak, you're whatever, blah blah blah. Forge says look me in the eye. and Oh he says there's no woman here to save you this time. <laughs> Forge says look me in the eye and say that. I love that by the way. That, that yeah. line kind of, kind of uh, is baiting him. Right? Yeah, the Arbiter, a little more time. Oh totally. The Arbiter is just like as you wish. Uh, picks up Forge in like this crazy aggressive grip. Where, like, he grabs his whole head from behind. Like, his arm is so huge. He grabs his whole head in his one in the, in the palm of his yeah. hand. Lifts him up. And says, my face will be the last thing your pathetic eyes will ever see. And then, oh shit, quick time event. Knife to the throat. <laughs> what? Uh, Forge pulls his knife that's in his shoulder holster. Which all kind of marines and a lot of Spartans have. But you rarely get to see. Um, and they should be quick time events. I'm just saying. Um, and Forge like jabs his blade into the neck of the Arbiter and he pretty much drops his blade Forge picks it up and jams the energy sword straight into the chest of the Arbiter which is pretty damn cool as the yeah. Spartans walk also that like, blade has an awesome cool. hilt the hilt is pretty cool it's like kind of like a renaissance rapier kind of blade it's pretty dope and uh, Forge just says for the record I would have kicked your ass the first time so Dead Forge uh, is pretty much walking around, and, <laughs> and the Spartans are just unceremoniously tossing the Elite's bodies over the edge of this cabin, yeah. which is pretty so cool, they're just cleaning the place up. Save uh, that armor, man, come on. Yeah, man, it's got some cool stuff. Um, so pretty much the, as you can expect, which happens in all of these situations, the bombs uh, cannot be armed remotely anymore because of the damage. Every it's single time. Fight. Every single time, so someone has to stay and flip it manually. Uh, Forge pretty much says we need the Spartans in this fight more than you need another Marine, i.e. me. So you get out of here. I'm gonna stay behind. Flip the switch. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty dope, man. I mean, he's a fucking cool dude. Yeah. Gotta love that, sport, that Forge. Uh, he probably doesn't smell so good right now. Just saying, Kyle. <laughs> but uh, he's there. And then it just the last scene we get is Forge nodding respect to the Spartan as he kind of walks away. Mm-hmm. into like an elevator of some kind and it looks like he goes towards the core uh, Forge is just left looking up this elevator as the kind of roof opens light comes in and that's it that's all we get yeah well that's the all that's final a lot. mission begins yeah very nice good description thank you there you go the uh, yeah then we have the cutscene that's when they're starting to talk about this portal and um, and we gotta get the the spirit of fire out of there so let's go over the main objectives of the mission. Um, the objectives. Open the portal. Whoa. <laughs> Optional objectives. Kill three scares. Close the portal. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Leave. Uh, so that's it. Just two objectives. And uh, I, it, f- for some reason, it finally clicked with me at the tail end of this game. Because I think you remember me questioning, like, why is this score so high? And why is this score so low? I feel like we did way more in some, like Beachhead but the high score wasn't that high. It's because there weren't that many objectives. Um, the actual objectives that we need to be, that uh, that give us scores that then are then used the multipliers to give us the, the higher scores. Um, there's, just, there's only two in this one. And so the the theoretical best score is decently high, but um, but just to get gold, it's, it's not that bad just because there are only two objectives. So the part time is 20 minutes to 33 minutes. 33 must be the full timer whenever that starts. Um, if you don't get that, then you're going to fail the mission. The scoring goals, gold is 30,000 30, and above. Silver is 20 to 29. Bronze is 10 to 19. Tin is 0 to 9. And then the theoretical best score is decently high at 64,000. So I think that, that Scarab objective must be pretty pretty juicy. Um, I I did pretty good. My first run, uh, I just did two runs. My first run was bronze. I was like, "Oh man, I think I got like seventeen thousand. I, I struggle. This this mission is kind of over, overwhelming because it's like, oh boy, there's there's some stuff to figure out. So if you haven't played it in a while, you know you have to do things in a certain order. And um, we're gonna we're actually gonna let Krista take us through this. She's played it the most. I feel like she has the best grasp of everything. So we're not gonna do our individual walkthroughs. 
Um, Krista is going to be the one that's just going to kind of lead the charge, and David and I will chime in. And then Krista and David also, they played the mission co-op. <gasps> what? Mm-hmm. So we'll have a little co-op experience. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and she, uh, Krista streamed it. Did you save that that walkthrough or that uh, uh, It'll be street. It'll be saved in the archive for at least 30 days. So. Okay. So you guys can go check that out. I was uh, watching from afar as the two, uh, two co- uh, co-opts the mission um so i got fifty thousand nine hundred and sixty. felt pretty decent about that david how'd you do um my first play well to say my i only played this game twice the first time uh co-op with krista and the second time solo so the solo i'd say is my quote-unquote real one mm-hmm. so i got real bad i got a bronze i got 1400 Oof. uh 14, it's terrible yeah fourteen thousand. um it's not really a lot to say other than I thought I was doing really good. I turtled way too long um, mm-hmm. and to unleash my forces with like hawk, super hawks everywhere, a bunch of vultures. I felt pretty good about what I was actually doing. At the very end, two scarabs just ran amok and destroyed half my shit. Oh. Um, and that really brought my spar down, I'd say. And the fact that I took really way too long uh, kind of did it for me. Um, but when I played co op, I got 42,120. Nice. That's right, guys. I wonder I how. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it, it was really good. And you actually got the better score. Out of you and I Chris. don't know uh, how. Yes, I, yes, did I did all the work. <laughs> Pretty damn great, guys. It's because my shit was blue. You know what I mean? I got that yeah, blue bonus. Yeah, I got the blue you know? bonus. It's true. Yeah. I'll do it. Krista, how did you do? What was your high score? I got 51,960. Oh! So just a just thousand more than you. <laughs> eat it out. Dang, I thought I was going to have a little run there. Two in a row. Um, so Krista is the official winner. She won like halfway through this whole uh, <laughs> competition. That Hooray! We had. Um, Krista, Hashtag I think... cheater. <laughs> I don't know Krista, how I did it, guys. Well, we watched you, so we know. Like the way that you play this game is pretty impressive. You're, you're the builds and moving things around. It's like you know what the hell you're doing. Um, it's pretty impressive to watch. The um, so the the overall the, the final. Uh, final standings, I guess, is Krista won. Th- uh, let's see, I won three, so I won three, and then Krista won twelve of the missions, and David did not win any of the missions. I didn't want to win, but it's there's fine. always Halo Wars too. There's always. Yeah. Halo Wars. <laughs> I don't know if it'd be any better. But, anyway. <laughs> uh, but that was fun. Thanks for thanks for uh, I don't know sticking through that with us guys, and we'll we'll figure out if we you know I'll still I still may want to try on heroic for the next one, but Krista wins Halo Wars. Congratulations! Yeah, what do I get? You get high fives. Yay. And, oh, you know what you get? We can't, you get, get, a, we can't do high fives. You get a nameplate. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> you get a Halo Wars nameplate. Perfect. The best. Yeah, there you go. All right, on the battlefield, this one's kind of like, it's everything, right, Krista? What it's everything, including Hawks and Crazy Back Blast Super Upgrades. It's yeah. amazing. Mm-hmm. And all the co- all the flood units are here. All the covenant units are here. You, you it's ju- it's just everything. It would take yeah. too long to go through everything, but which it should be for the last mission, right? Oh, definitely. You should always have like an awesome like, you know, arsenal at the very last mm-hmm. mission, so it's super epic. Yeah, there's um sentinels that are floating around too for whatever reason. So they don't do some... much either. Yeah, there's some big ones though. There's some big juicy ones that uh, were causing problems. <laughs> big and... boys. Yeah, and then there's the little ones too, but um, I think the only the only units that the UNSC doesn't see are the the specialized ones. So we don't get rhinos, which we saw early on in the game. Uh, grizzlies, we don't get to see grizzlies anymore. And then the gremlin, which is Anders' special unit. But I think you could build um, elephants. Does it doesn't it let you build elephants? Uh-huh. It does. You can. So you can build pretty much everything. And then it's 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 weird having all of the spirit of fire fire abilities because we haven't had them all before, um, and we finally get you know get them all at our disposal. So I know that I used the um, oh I didn't put it in here the the cryo blast as well. I used the car, the cryo blast a little bit here and there just to see and it actually worked out okay for me. Um, yeah. So difficulty modifications on easy all enemy units have twenty five percent less health. And 20% uh, less damage. Least It says least aggressive enemies and enemies have low level upgrades. Least, uh, that's that's bad. Um, lower aggressive enemies. There we go. Let's, let's pick it up there, Prima Guide. Uh, <laughs> heroic, all enemy units have 25% more health and 25% 
more damage. Enemy uh, Enemies have high level upgrades. You begin with half the supply resources. Yeah, you get a bunch of, of, of supplies right away. I think it's 5,000 or something crazy. So having half would be uh, quite a bit of, of a hit. On legendary, all enemy units have 50% more health and 50% more damage. Most aggressive, uh, most aggressive enemies and enemies have highest level upgrades. Ooh, this this mission on legendary Ugh, it makes me shudder. <laughs> yeah, uh, and you begin with only 1,000 supply resources. Ouch, that hurts. This would be rough. Okay, so as I mentioned, Chris is gonna walk us through. David and I will chime in here and there, um, and then we'll go through the co-op experience uh, at the tail end. Then, we'll, then there's a the whole cutscene stuff. So we got we got a, a nice little healthy show here for you, Krista. How? What's your? What, what do we do here? Like, what's our approach? So the overall like goal of this mission is to open this Forerunner portal, and how to do that is there are the two adjacent, not adjacent, the two. Um, the two portals on the other side of each other mm-hmm. open need to be opened at the same time. The way to open the portals is you have to clear out all other alien life in the vicinity of the portal controls. Yeah, and it's not that that big of a radius, I guess. But it's like, I, I remember on one of them, it was like there was this flood egg that was just kind of hanging out. Yeah, and, and that I, you have to I just couldn't, pop. I couldn't, yeah, I just had to pop that and then all of a sudden I could, I could open it up. But. And you don't even need units around. Once you clear out the area, yeah. you're free to open it whenever you want. Mm-hmm. Um, the order, the best order to open them is uh, 12, o'clock, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and then 5 o'clock. So it goes in that order. It goes clockwise, mm-hmm. these little guys. Okay. So There's an achievement, too, I think, for, well, I know there is. Opening them in that order, yeah. yeah. in a specific order. And there's, like a, there's a little forerunner symbol that must be, like, telling you which order to to open them in yeah they all have 400 symbols on them the two matching ones are the ones you open at the same time they just happen to be across the way from each other all of them so yeah when once you learn that it, you don't really have to worry about the symbols at all anymore yeah. um the, the other little nuance of this mission is because forge is not around anymore your bases start as just fire bases and then you have to upgrade them to station and then also upgrade them to fortress yeah but that's okay. It's not that big. Oh, never deal. noticed that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So his special ability in multiplayer is uh, is that everything starts as a station. Oh, interesting. So that's kind of a nice tie-in, I think. Okay. So the the main goal in this is the bonus objective, which is to kill three scarabs. Mm-hmm. Scarabs roughly take five minutes to spawn in once you kill one of them. And if you actually want to make the time goal, you're going to have to get on that pretty much right away. Um, my strategy for taking up the, out the scarabs is to upgrade the Mac Blast to four rounds. Yeah. And then carpet bomb it. It's, it's quite glorious, because that way you don't have to be sending units and sacrificing units over to the scarabs. You just destroy it from orbit. And do the scarabs show up on the map whenever they're spawned? Or do you have to no, find them? you have to go find them. So okay. the Covenant base on the very left side of the circle is going to be from your starting point. It's going to be the left mm-hmm. side of the circle from your starting point. Um, that's the base that's going to spawn in scarabs. So you definitely don't want to start going that way on the circle. You want to go counterclockwise from where you spawn from the circle. So you want to go straight yep. into the flood infestation. Yep. But first you want to upgrade your base. You want to upgrade your base... Reactor, supply pads, upgrade again. Reactor, supply pads, upgrade again. More supply pads. Um, field armory. And then upgrade all that, upgrade all the reactors, and then start churning out those Mac upgrades. You want to be churning them out. You need to do three of them. They're expensive. Get mm-hmm. those done as soon as you can so you can take out that first scarab that spawns in. That's your. That's going to be your, your goal. While you're waiting for that to happen, I took all my spart. Of course, I took my marines, and then there's a supply forerunner supply pad to the left and right of your base. Garrison those guys there. Take your Spartans and start going clown- counterclockwise up the circle. You're gonna run into some flood, and you're also gonna run into a pretty base. So you're gonna plop another base down there, more supply <laughs> pads, and you're gonna get an air pad going, and you're gonna start churning out vultures when you got some extra money. So, have you killed the the scarab at this point, or not? Um, not yet. Once I get, okay. I try to get the second base pretty quickly off the bat. Once I establish the first base, mm-hmm. 
And so you're gonna start going up the circle. Event like when I was at the the not not the one right adjacent to it. Maybe the second one up. It was it was a gate or two away from the uh, away from the main base that I was able to get all the upgrades. And then of course you have to wait for the scarab to not be moving because he's hard to hit, and you don't you can't waste yeah. any of those mac rounds if you want to kill this thing in one swoop. I felt like, so the Scarab for my playthrough, maybe this is standard, is that he was just attacking the, the flood area right away. And so I couldn't go too far up to the right, at least I didn't want to, um, because I didn't want him to start attacking my units. So I kind of skirted them around. So I, I, I kind of parked them far enough away where the Scarab wouldn't um, bother me at all. But then I, um, I kind of moved them far off and to the right so that I could you know, take out some of the flood, and then he finally eventually just kind of buggered off and left them all. Yeah, the scarab seems to kind of just randomly circle the, um, the gates, the, mm -hmm. the hard light bridges and gates, um, and he just kind of randomly aggros onto something every once in a while. Yeah. So as long as you don't have units on that blue, on those blue panels, he shouldn't really bug you. Um, and then you just gotta wait for an optimal moment to take him out as soon as possible. So take him out, and then you just have to literally just wait a couple minutes for the next one to spawn. Usually the next one will just start crawling around that middle middle area too, depending on how far in you are. But another optimal way to do it is that Covenant base all the way on the left. You can kind of- it spawns on the left of the base, so you can kind of like take a hornet and like peek and see if it's spawned oh, in yet, and then run sure. away. So I would do that occasionally, and I upgraded my Hornets to Sparrowhawk during this run, and upgraded yeah. the Vultures. So my team consists of, consisted of Sparrowhawks and Vultures, put throw the Spartans into the Sparrowhawks, and just keep going around the circle, so... Mm -hmm. you, get, um, you get a max of 40 units right away, and then the upgrade gives you up to 50, mm -hmm. which is interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. so once I completed all those Mac rounds and stuff like that that I wanted to upgrade, I definitely upgraded the uh, the population to 50 yeah did you mention sorry um that that little light barrier that you can activate on the left so between the covenant base that spawns yeah in a like i usually act i go over that so i go so i go all the way to the top of the circle and activate those two two um the first two panels first and then i and then i go and then i send units all the way back over to the left of the base not to the not quite to the covenant base but just enough to unlock the second the second set of doors yeah and then once that happens then i go then i kind of usually there's a covenant base on like the upper like the top left area there's another covenant base there so i take that out usually the second scarab spawned by now so you want to take that out as soon as you can. And then at that point, like, pretty much ready to go. Every other door's open. And then you're just waiting for the game to spawn another Scarab, which is kind yeah. of annoying. Mm -hmm. How much do you um, pay attention to the flood? Because there's a ton of them on the, kind of the right side as you're you know, starting the game. Um, on the right side of the map there. Is a lot, and I felt like I wanted to build a bunch of bases. Kind of, a, I, I wanted to just make the full, you know, clockwise or counterclockwise sweep, where I was going, clearing everything out, and then building a base. And then, actually, sometimes I built a base too quickly, and there was like one of those launchers that just took it out, or like maybe even just like a couple infection farms that would just destroy it before. Yeah, I that happened to me a few times. Yeah, so you have to really clear that area out before you build those, but. You Krista, were you building? How many bases did you have like at the very end? Three or four. Yeah. So you don't need them all. You don't. In other words, no. Yeah. I mean, I would, I would to... plop, I would plop one down just to plop one down because sometimes mm -hmm. the covenant can reclaim the bases, so you want to at least have something there. Um, yeah. For the bases by the flood, just make sure you're throwing turrets on the base as soon as possible, and it pretty much takes care of itself. Mm -hmm. Did you get assaulted by? At one point, I got assaulted by some locusts. Mm, and yep. it was just a pain in my butt. And like, oh, yeah, because they can they can hit you from a long ways away, and your and turrets, your... at least your base turrets, don't even notice that they're there. Even yeah, they're that's counted. annoying. Usually, I would just take a sparrow hawk over and destroy them. Every once in a while, I'd try to get a Spartan and a locust, just because they're nice for destroying bases. Oh yeah, I didn't even try that. Yeah. But oh, the other thing that reminds me, the other thing you don't get in this mission is um, Cyclops. 
No. Because that's a forge, a forge unit. But those those would be helpful for taking out a base. But really, the bases aren't that bad. It's more just the scarabs that are pain. Yes, the scarabs are super pain. Just getting getting the spawn in is really frustrating. So mm -hmm. the end the end of the run, I was just waiting for the final scarab to spawn, and then boom, 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 hit him, open the last door, and then you're done. Yep. So did you even destroy that covenant base? Did you do it for good measure, or did you just leave it in? Um, sometimes the door will let you activate it even though the covenant base is there. So if I had the ability to do that, I just open the door. Yeah, might as well, right? Yeah, just to, just so that I was making sure I was getting under par time. Mm -hmm. Um, this and you you said that somewhere along the lines you beat this whole game on legendary, right? Yes. Um, leading up to Halo Wars two, I beat Halo Wars one on legendary. Okay, and this mission's got to be just crazy hard. Yeah, right. it's a pain in the ass. Like on legend, when you're doing a legendary run, you're not worried about taking out all the scarabs. You're not worried about the part time. You just sit and turtle until you have enough shit. Oh, okay. So you're not necessarily getting gold. Oh no, you're floor. getting like you're tin. Beating. You're just trying to survive on legendary. Yeah, yeah. you got to really optimize everything if you want to get gold on legendary. Yeah, it, that that's way sure. too much work. I was just doing it for the chivo. Right. Yep. Very nice. Um, David, any other little nuances? Were you kind of going with, you know, just, uh, Sparrowhawks and vultures and stuff on your runs? Yeah, I went all air on the missions I did by myself, uh, but I didn't do it as efficiently as Tristan did. I was throwing bases down left, right, and center. Yeah. I lost a few of them because of flood stuff, and I feel like that all this is obviously going against me in my score and why I got so bad. So mm -hmm. like, I imagine losing a base is a significant loss. Even if it's one that you've only just started to build. Yeah, that's a good one. So, um, that's not great. But other than that, like, the mission itself isn't bad. Um, I, I kind of like it, to be honest. It's kind of a weird map design. <laughs> um, it's kind of annoying where, like, the, the Covenant can kind of come across the portal. And I feel like your units can't. Uh, at least when I tried co op, I couldn't get any units onto the portal. Um, oh. I found that a bit annoying because I was trying to fight them there and stuff like that. But obviously, air units just like are are the the key to victory. Speaking of just the the word portal, like we think about portal as you know a teleportation device, but in this sense, in this in this mission, portal is just opening. That's all it means. Yeah. So you're just you're just taking out the <clears throat> excuse me the the hard light cover off of this portal so that you can just open the, essentially just open the door so you can get the hell out of the middle of this shield world um let's see here any other interesting tidbits i'm trying to think the skull so once you get the the um scarabs the skull is where is it it's kind of at the top of or it's, it's in amongst a flood right it's kind of in some some floody areas yeah yeah, so make sure to get that because I mean, and one of them, actually I haven't gotten the skull yet because my high score I felt like I did pretty good. <clears throat> I got all three scarabs, and then I just ended the mission without going to get the skull. <laughs> <laughs> so I still need to go back and do that because I was just too excited. I was like, okay, just get out of here. Let's let's be done. But uh, grab that skull. It's right right in the flood area, uh, flood flooded area. <clears throat> excuse me. And then the black box is kind of close to that. Um, to one of the one of the covenant bases like on the just on the the edge of the of the portal doors so go grab that too it's it's easy enough to grab um all right let's do let's do the co-op run how did you guys do how did it how was it It was fun to watch that's for sure it was how does it, how does co-op work range it was weird especially when you didn't really know how the co-op would work but um it's actually cool um Probably in the last mission wasn't the best mission to start it on, but obviously we kicked ass because, you know, Chris, they carried me. Right. And that was kind of great. Um, you start off and, like, you have the ability to, like, build your own stuff in each other's bases. You start off with, like, one base. My stuff that is controlled by me cannot be controlled by Krista unless I release control. You can give each other units uh, by selecting them and kind of, there's, like, an option to kind of from your leader wheel, I think, to give a person um, the control of that unit. Um, you have the same resource pool and the same population cap. So it's not like you can just spam anything with, with two players. Um, the mission isn't any harder, I don't think, based on the number of players in there. 
but obviously you're working from a limited pool you need to kind of coordinate if you're spitting units and producing things um differently um mm-hmm. the second player gets a color and mine was blue yeah seeing the blue skinned uh units was really cool was like seeing a vulture that's blue and blue air units and blue warhogs really cool mm-hmm. um they really stand out which is obviously what they're supposed to do so you can tell the difference between units um the same with like the leader power pool you, you have the same resources i think didn't we or could we No, they were separate actually so we could like shoot almost like eight mac rounds at the end. Yes. Because we had four each. That's, oh, that's really funny. cool. Uh, which allows you to kind of pull down multiple heals and multiple transports and stuff, which we never really did, but um, would would have been cool. Um, it's it's cool. It's it's fun. Like I I've, I've rarely played co-op, um, RTSs, so I've I've found this quite quite enjoyable. Mm-hmm. And so you could you build everything that because Chris was the first player. Yeah. So you could go build supply pads, you could build reactors, and then you would only, so just to clarify what you were talking about, when you went to the vehicle depot yourself and built a scorpion, that was your scorpion. That's it, yeah. Yeah, okay. And then Krista was off building her stuff. So I guess in this mission specifically, you know, you could even say like, okay, I'm going to take this base and this base, and then you can have this other, these other two bases or like that. Um, if you wanted to, I like, kind of split it up that way, or you could just spawn stuff in the same base. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's no difference really in terms of like who who builds or controls a base because mm-hmm. you can build whatever unit you want from it, and they become yours. Yeah. Um, so I guess just in terms of like score keeping, that might make a difference, um, which is probably why I got the higher score in that run because I probably had a lot less losses per kills. Mm-hmm. And Krista had the bulk of the force because she was zooming around the fucking map. <laughs> <laughs> doing shit talking about forerunner symbols and i'm like my thing's blue (laughs) (laughs) yeah it was it's fun to watch krista an expert at this i would say just how quickly she moves and and yeah my brain doesn't work that fast and maybe it will if i have more experience but i don't think so i think it's just you gotta you got you you got your wraps on this game it's it's fun to watch yay (laughs) thank you (laughs) (laughs) um Cool. So co-op, co-op's worth it, I would say. It's, it's. Is there achievement for like doing the whole thing co-op, the whole campaign? Um, probably? I would have to look it up. Maybe. I know we got I did, achievos for I just didn't doing one any. mission. Yeah, I think it might be only one. There's one or two secret achievements I didn't look up, but it didn't look like there was a whole campaign co-op. Okay. There's a, there's a bunch of stuff for skirmish and oh, different achievements tied with the multiplayer. So annoying. And stuff. I hate multi multiplayer achievements. Like should yeah. not exist. I hate them so much. Just in general? Yeah. yeah. Just because, the, like, if it was level-wise or something like that, it's fine. But I don't know. I'd, I'd r- much prefer campaign achievements. Yeah. Like, doing weird things in, in multiplayer. I mean, some people just play multiplayer, but I feel like that's probably not the case in RTS I games. would also... I think most people would play the campaign and multiplayer if they yeah. really want to you know, extend the, extend the life of the game. I would also assume, like, generally, if you're someone who only plays, like, multiplayer... Like, you probably don't care about achievements. Yeah, good point. Yeah, you, yeah. It's, it's nice when you... I mean, it's nice to have some things here and there, and it's more of like when you're playing multiplayer, it's like, oh, I did that thing, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Neat. The game recognized something that it... You know, some goal that I set for me that I didn't even know existed. Cool, thanks. <laughs> uh, versus... Yeah, and it want to be something really special to actually hold my attention enough to me to grind out multiplayer achievements they're mm-hmm. pretty rare that i would do that yeah i mean there's some things i think i can think back to when i was i think i tried to get most of them in halo uh halo 4 like you had to do a couple of funky things like with a rocket launcher or something like that you know like kill people after you like when you're jumping off of one of the man cannons and kill you know so those things are, are kind of interesting but but just i, I would say i agree because just put those all in campaign so i can do those in like my you know enclosed single player space <laughs> yeah so i don't have to like ruin other people's experience in multiplayer because i'm off fucking around to, trying to get an achievement yeah i i think that's it's just a big problem i think it's just like achievement hunters and multiplayer like people wanting to be you know pretty serious about multiplayer it's like it just doesn't work very well mm-hmm. yep totally um, the other thing, I think I, maybe I mentioned the cryo bomb was um, handy because <laughs> there was one point where the, for me, um, so back to you know, when I was doing this by myself, the scarab was like scurrying off, and I, 
I, I threw a, a cryo bomb on top of it so it stayed put, and then I could use my Mac Blast. Oh, that's perfect. Which is kind of handy. Yeah. Oh, that's real clever. I never thought to do that. Yeah. That uh, and, and I think there are a couple of spots too. I think I, um, because when I was approaching the base, uh, one of the Covenant bases, and I was like, oh, this thing is kind of effing me up. I'm just gonna do a cryo thing and see if it works, and it did. So then I got you know had that in my head. I was like, oh, I'm gonna try it on the Scarab too. Um, yeah, it worked out pretty well. Did you do any ODSTs, David? I know you're an ODST man. Uh, I did. When we played with Krista, we like bombarded the last base with a shit ton of ODSTs <laughs> and map oh, yeah. blasts. It was Just so everything good. came from space. It was really good. Um, and when I played solo, I tried to do it too because I had like a, what I call like a rampant scarab that was doing laps of the map murdering all of my shit <laughs> and I, w- I wasn't clever enough to think to hold it with freeze it so i just dropped odsts around it as it was running around oh, funny. trying to like just have some kind of mobile units to try and take it down um it was fun but not like you know it wasn't productive yeah um not the best use of resources by any means but other than that you know i love odsts they do they are cool very cool. And did you drop them on a scarab at one point? Yeah, that was what we did in the yeah. in the uh, co-op. Okay. Did you remember if it did anything? No. <laughs> it just looked cool. Yeah, right. Nice. So we have an end cutscene to discuss, but anything you guys want to anything else you want to cover before? I think there's engineers in here somewhere too that you got to deal with from time to time. Yeah, but... they're just little floating blobs. They don't yeah, do much. Not a big deal. Um Anything else you guys want to cover before we do this cutscene? I think we're good. Okay. That's pretty much it. David, do you want to take us through this last cutscene? Oh my god, the last cutscene. I mean, it's... Rip. Rip. This is what, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's cool. And I, as you can imagine, it's got like everything an endgame Halo thing should, should have. Uh-huh. Um, it starts off uh it, well through the last mission it should be like forge is talking to you just in case you're wondering like what the hell happened to forge yeah um he is talking to you and like giving you a countdown and stuff like that and saying yeah i'm activating it now pretty much at the end he says like, he gives like a 10 minute mark he's like okay 10 minutes yeah get the hell out of there uh so the end cutscene begins with like the spirit of fire the forerunner ships floating around you can kind of see them now they look kind of weird uh, around the sun uh that it, kind of a cool shock when you think about it that like you can see like the quote-unquote planet around it and the sun in, in the middle of it which is kind of cool uh it gives you kind of idea of kind of the scale um so it pretty much says that like the end of the last mission is like okay all ground forces are being evacuated serena says okay hangar bays reports all crews checked in we evacuate everybody off this um cutter pretty much says that's not us they are welcome let's get the hell out of here um serena is like saying that gravity field is expanding so forge has obviously pushed the button at this stage mm-hmm. he's gone and he says we're not going anywhere we're trapped by the sun so then it's pretty much okay another space standard of you know sci-fi games we're mm-hmm. going to do a slingshot maneuver um so that's pretty much what the spirit of fire does we're going to slingshot around the sun and into the portal that you opened um so it's it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but so it's interesting that he, he almost it almost seems like he just thinks of that in the spot. Yeah, totally. But like, versus, oh, maybe this is how we're gonna get out of here. Yeah. Well, slingshotting around gravitational bodies is like a thing now. Yeah, so we that's do a that well all the time. Documented thing of like how to propel things in and out of you know deep space and stuff like it that. It also it saves like crazy amounts of fuel. Like when NASA's yeah. NASA's trying to send ships off to you know. Uranus or Neptune or something like that, they wait until the planets are going to be aligned at a certain date so that the aircraft, the craft can just slingshot and save fuel to go farther into space faster. Yeah. Best way to think of it is like a low-tech solution uh, to this problem. Um, so it's pretty cool. So then you get like a cool scene of like the spirit of fire like flying around this sun at like crazy speeds while the supernova is sucking in the forerunner ships. Um, it's pretty cool. You can imagine the G Force is pretty insane. It's got a, it's got a great like GoPro camera scene for a second, like outside <laughs> the ship as it rockets around the sun, mm-hmm. um, which is pretty cool. And then it just kind of needles through the thread. The spirit of fire shoots through the portal, 
uh, which looks tiny in, in comparison. It doesn't really, well, doesn't look to the scale of the mission. Yeah. Uh, let's say when you think about the size of the Spirit of Fire to like what it, what it flies through. But anyway, let's get over that. Um, Spirit of Fire comes through the other end as this planet is breaking up. It looks dope uh, as it kind of implodes on itself. And the Spirit of Fire just kind of pretty much shuts away as this kind of planet blows the fuck up. It look, looks cool. And Forge is okay though, right? Well, he's, no, he's good. But, sure, almost, almost. Um, <laughs> it then cuts to the Spirit of Fire, Cryo Room 3, March 11th, 2531. Um, so this is apparently Captain is Keys is talking to Anders. He's saying there's no need. Captain Keys. Um, ca- uh, sorry, Anders. <laughs> Uh, saying, Andrew says, I would like to stay here or stay awake and monitor the area. And Cutter says, no, it's been no sign of the Covenant for almost two weeks. Um, so we're just not really point here instead. So he's like, there's nothing to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, Andrew's is arguing. Cutter's having none of it. He puts her in the cryo tube and turns it on. Says, you got us out of there alive. Get some rest. Yeah. Just, I mean, just a not reminder because the, not all the, the FTL drive, we don't have anymore. So they're, they're just, exactly. they're just, they're somewhere and they're floating in space now. Yeah, they have. They're... They can. They can, of course, you know. They still have regular engines, so they can yeah. set a course to something. But and they're going pretty fast. After you'd imagine, after that slingshot move, they they've been, they're moving. Not fast enough because they're, they're in yeah. super deep space. It, exactly. Yeah, it, it doesn't really matter how fast they move. Uh, do you know what I mean? In terms of the distances in space. Mm-hmm. Um. So Anders goes into cryo. She's frozen. Um, cutters pretty much close up the rest of the the empty tubes and it kind of shows you know Forge's one being closed up but empty what you know <laughs> hashtag sad <laughs> um, yeah because he did it really good no he he's a he's a true hero he is he's, he's, he is. Uh, he's awesome um, that's kind of more or less where like the game ends um, there's a bit more afterwards that even in other other mediums that we'll kind of cover, I guess, in our in our wrap up. Well, we do get a little stinger at the very end. You do get a little stinger. Mm-hmm. Um, what happens? Serena something. says <laughs> something. <has happened. laughs> wow. Hmm. <laughs> Gotta leave the door open for a sequel, all right? Always. Got to. Well, mm-hmm. I I think they set it up really nicely. Just the spirit of fire, just floating in space. It's pretty much just the end of Halo 3. <laughs> yeah. Well, good point. Yeah, the little stinger. And then it's interesting, too, because we know so much about AIs at this point, I would say, because it's been talked about um, in the games when we talk about release order. But you're saying something has happened, and if you're thinking about, like, Timeline and Serena, you don't know how old she is. Um, you know, so she's still around when something has happened. Ooh. Which is interesting, right? Spooky. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there's comic book, um, go read um, Tales from Slip Space, and there's a, a comic called Something Has Happened that talks about that. And then when we uh, we go into Halo Wars 2, we'll learn learn more. Wait, there's a sequel? There is, <gasps> indeed. Oh, what? yeah! <laughs> yeah, so good stuff. The uh, These cutscenes are so good. So good. Um, in, you thank know, you, there's Blur. Some little, yeah, thank you very much. There's little inconsistencies in the lore and stuff like that, but... We don't let that bother us too much. I'm ready um, for overall. the Sentinel cutscene. Yes. <laughs> it's coming. Halo Wars right. 2. That's right. Um, okay, cool. That's that's it for Halo War. We did it! Yay! Yay! We will Woo-hoo! we'll do a recap show, as I mentioned, and talk about a bunch of other stuff, a bunch of other thoughts and more lore and, and some cool stuff that uh, I think we'll go maybe a little more in depth on you know, Etrin Harbridge, Hardridge and the, uh, the Sentinel uh, or the Forerunner ships and stuff like that. I also, I also want to at least cover off on the skulls because I abandoned those, like what they are. <laughs> so <laughs> I feel like I'll at least mention those in the, in the recap show. But let's do our trivia and then we'll finish it out with some community. Oh, wait, there's a black box too, I would imagine. Yep. Yes, yep. there okay. is. All right, let's wrap it up. Okay, uh, trivia. Uh, like Halo Combat Evolved, Halo 3, and slightly to the Spartan. Uh, to Spartan is badly written. Okay. Uh, the final level in Halo Wars involves escaping an explosion designed to destroy a forerunner structure, quote unquote, the Halo, uh, the Halo conundrum, uh, Halo solution. 
uh, to stop the antagonist is also vaguely similar to the end of Marathon 2. Uh, Journal as the protagonist must put his son into early supernova. Interesting. Spoilers. Uh, spoilers. The forerunner symbols on the projected blue floors are numbers 1 to 5 from the Ir- Iris campaign. After 5, the symbol for 3 is repeated. Interesting. Mm. Uh, it is possible to kill any, if not all, members of Red Team by opening a door whilst they are standing on it. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, one will see the Spartans fall to their deaths. Interesting. Perfect. I was going to ask about that, if, that, if yeah. you could do that for the, um, the Covenant. Yeah, you can do that for the Covenant. You can do it with that with all the units. Can you do that with a Scarab? Yeah. I don't think oh, it counts so as a kill, a... though. Okay. I didn't know this was possible. There is a mega turret that seems to have been abandoned, much like the Scarab and Beachhead, near one of the Covenant bases. It can be. It can help destroy the base if it's garrisoned. What? You can garrison no that? I noticed it, but it didn't do anything. I did not notice it. It's by that big okay. Covenant base that makes Scarabs. Uh, okay, in the center of the level, there is a structure similar to the Sentinel Shop or Protector Plant. It produces protectors in groups of three most yeah. of the time, and the Covenant will battle the Sentinels if contact is made. Mm-hmm. Uh, once the player has beaten the game on Legendary, the Legendary ending will play every time, regardless of difficulty. Also, if the player skips the credits when playing on Legendary, it will skip ahead to Serena's Legendary dialogue, rather than skipping it too. So that must be the Legendary part. Yep. Just, just something, something has, happened. has happened. Yep, that's it. That's all we got. <laughs> but we, they must have just unlocked that for the definitive, because I got that. Uh, that's what I'm, I, yeah, I'm thinking so too. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. Okay, cool. Thank there you. There we go. Black box, what you have? All right. Eh, it's okay. I mean, uh, so February 25th, 2531, thanks to Sergeant Forge's sacrifice that he totally didn't die in. Uh, the Spirit of Fire <laughs> escaped from the Forerunner Shield World. Spirit of Fire sets a course for home as the ra- as the majority of the crew prepare to enter cryo sleep for the journey that will take years, if not decades. Mm-hmm. It's very far away. Its space is very big. It is. It's large. All right. So let's do some community because we have I have, I have a related question. <gasps> community question. You're very good. A very timely question, Colin. Um, <laughs> it is. Colin Perkins, the admin, April 10th at 8.12 p.m. It's 25.42, and you begin your six-month shift of keeping an eye on the spirit of fire while everyone else is in cryo. What do you do the past the time? Question for mission debrief, hill of water skate mission. I'm guessing we're going to get a lot of quarantine-esque <laughs> responses <laughs> right. in this call, and so very timely. Uh, Matthew says, you know, thinking about that, it's rather dangerous to have only one person basically by themselves for six months. Uh, says Matthew. I imagine it'd be shifts and nah, crews and nah, teams. just play along. Play along. Yeah. Play along. Uh, Thomas says, play Halo and make podcasts. Good man. Uh, Tyler says, practice on my sharpshooting skills. Matthew says, use a sharpie to draw mustaches on other parts of male anatomy and all other crew members' cryopods. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> what you should do is just uh, Jared... sharpie out the whole thing so that when they wake up, they just see blackness. Okay. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's dead. scary. Uh, Jared says play Halo Wars one and two. Lucas says pl- I play all the games on my Steam library that I swore I'd get to, but never have. Probably at a hundred games I've never played. Yeah, sounds like most people with Steam accounts. Feel that. Uh, Manny says in Halo Five they had war games, which means the Hollow Deck must have been invented around that time. I'd spend my time on the Hollow Deck. Don't ask me what I'd be doing. <laughs> It's going to be uh, those uh, episodes of Star Trek where Data's a uh, Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. <laughs> Every single one. Schwartek <laughs> uh, says a maintenance of pelicans, broadswords, longswords, polishing Shiva warheads, and railgun rounds and other vehicles. Mm, he's a bit uh, Alan says uh, do a la Dr. Foe in Star Trek Enterprise and run naked around the ship singing. <laughs> Probably not running though. Running around naked sounds very uncomfortable. Reading and playing video games is more likely. Yeah. Uh, ben says not safe for work. Um, <laughs> no. Storm finally says clean up the ship because everyone probably left it dirty before they went into cryo and played nothing but solid solitary to pass the time. Oh, Talk to my friend Wilson. Yeah. Shout out to Wilson. Yeah. Shout out to Wilson. There we go. Very nice. Discord. How'd you do? All right. Uh, King Big Beard. <laughs> Said I would take my time to play the Halo 2 to play Halo 2 Lasso, but I wouldn't finish. 
<laughs> Spartan Tundra says, watch some Halo movies, play some Halo games, read some Halo books, then play some Gears 5 and laugh at the people screaming at me. Who's screaming at you? <laughs> uh, Dizzy Buffer says, I just reboot some stuff. <clears throat> Uh, Spartan B312 says, play Kerbal until my head explodes. The computer's alt F4s, the computer alt F4s itself, the save game gets correct, corrupted, or I get infected by the flood. So. I've never played Kerbal. I have it, I think. I I've Sounds never fun. played it either. I know of it, though. Mm -hmm. uh, Hectorius says, binge all eight seasons of Game of Thrones, then The Walking Dead, then Master, uh,. I mean, I'll talk to my family. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, Matt has posted a gif of Michael Jackson saying, just beat it. So, hmm. <laughs> so he's going to be dancing. He'll be he'll dancing, be dancing yes. He'll be doing really, he'll be learning all the cool Michael Jackson dance moves. Yep. What a, what a great way to spend your time. <laughs> <laughs> Good cardio. <laughs> and finally, Jedi Spartan 38 says, Binge watch everything from my favorite franchises. Lose all faith in humanity when I get to Torchwood. Children of the Earth. So, basically, how I'm spending my time in lockdown. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> but very good stuff, Discord. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's, it'd be a long time to spend alone, so I don't know what I would do. Six months. Yeah. Lots of video games, for sure. Oh. Maybe I'd start reading some comic books that I haven't read. Hopefully Serena's <laughs> still around. You have someone to talk to. Yeah. Could have some existential conversations with Serena. Fun. <laughs> Blow Just my stare. mind, Serena. Yeah, exactly. Stare into space. Lots of stuff to do. All right, that will do it for our debriefing of the escape mission from Halo Wars. On the next episode... We'll be recapping Halos, talking about its place in the Halo universe. Send us your thoughts. PodcastEvolved at gmail.com or drop us a tweet at PodcastEvolved on Twitter. You can also support the show by visiting Podcast Evolved on Patreon. Until next time, Evolve. Evolve. Evolve.